Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and if you're new to my channel, hey, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing, and if you're back, welcome back. Today, I'm here to join you all for a whip and chat, and I just wanted to mention right up front that if you are looking for the Drills and Chills Week 1 video, stay tuned. That's coming on Thursday. It is not going to be looped in with my weekly whip and chats, just in case you were wondering, because I know some people were, actually a lot of people were asking about that um, in our Facebook group and in the Drills and Chills kickoff video. So I just wanted to let you guys know that those videos are going to be on Thursdays. At least that's the plan for the moment. But what a whip and chat is, whip stands for a work in progress and chat stands for chat. <laughs> Self-explanatory. Uh, so feel free to whip out your whip and work alongside me while we catch up just a little bit. So um, I am going to be working on a diamond painting and just catching up with you a bit about my week and what I've been up to as far as crafting goes, give you some family updates and that sort of thing. Um, and I love to hear from you guys in the comments how you've been and how your week has been and whatnot. So I'll be working on a diamond painting while we chat. Let me give you a really quick rundown of all of the things. So the diamond painting that I'm working on is called After the Rain. It is from Diamond Art Club, licensed from the artist Olha Darchuk. And this is the first kit that I'm working on for Drills and Chills 2022. Accessories wise, I really can't resist going all out with all of the themed things. So uh, the pens I'll be using, this is a newer one. Um, I actually have not officially opened it in a small shop haul yet, uh, but this is from Brewers Custom Diamond Painting Pens. And on Etsy, their shop name is actually MTN Inspirations. I'll link to it, but this is one of their fall pens. And then this is an oldie but a goodie for me. It's um, one of my favorites. This is from Pen Pal, Diamond Painting Pen Pal. Um, it's one of their, their, they originated the roll stop pen, so it's flat on one side. So if you're working on an angled surface, um, your pen won't roll off. It'll stop because it has that flat edge. But I actually am really incredibly obsessed with this pen, and I think it's absolutely perfect for all things Halloween. So I busted this one out. Uh, the tray is one of the magic colors, one of the magic diamond painting trays from... Um, uh, actually, hold on just a second, you guys. Okay, sorry about that. I just got a notification on my watch. I wanted to check. This is one of the magic tray colors from Munimate. Look at that color shift. So it shifts from yellow to red. I, I think is this is a strawberry banana or is this sunset? I don't remember what the name of this one is. It's not strawberry banana. That one is a lighter pink and yellow. I don't remember what this one is, but isn't that so pretty? I thought it was perfect for fall and for the colors in this one. Um, and then minders wise, uh, this is one that I got, I think last year from Agnes Little Minders, and it's got the pumpkin, and I know the dragon is blue, but actually this painting has some purple and blue in it, so I thought this would work well. Super cute. And then this is from way back when Rachel Ray had a um, an Etsy shop where she sold minders. I just, oh, this little fox guy. Rachel has been ridiculously kind and supportive, like just in general, but also like especially about drills and chills. And so I was like, oh, I'm gonna pull out one of my Rachel minders. So. I am quite sure that you guys have heard of Rachel Ray at this point. If you haven't, I mean, just look up Rachel Ray Crafts and she'll show up for you. She's absolutely, absolutely amazing and I adore her. So um, I'm going to be using Not Your Mama's Mud, which is from the Etsy shop Whimsical Daisies. Um, and the scent is, it's pretty basic, again, keeping on theme. I have like, a, I got permanent marker on my nails, so that's what that is, if my camera even wants to focus anyway. Um, and then this putty is in maple scent, and this is from Sensible by Design. So those are my accessories. The washi tape is simply gilded, and it's just kind of a random small roll I wanted to use that. But hey, we're going to try something out in this video really quick. So um, I was noticing that the single placer in this pen was really not wanting to like, it was just wiggly, it was loose. I tried the washi tape trick as you can see because this works well for multi-placers. It just doesn't seem to want to work as well in my single placer. I mentioned it to um, Jacqueline and she was like, you should try this trick that I saw posted in your Facebook group, which I have a Facebook group with um, Lindsay at Emeralds and Fairy Lights called Diamonds and Emeralds, and somehow I missed someone posting about this, so I apologize. I did not go back to look up this person's name before filming this video, but um, 
it was this trick and Jacqueline's like I'll just send you pictures because she's like I do it all the time now so I was like okay I'm gonna try this live in my whip and chat and hopefully it's not gonna backfire terribly so I guess what you do is you cut off one of these loopies oop from a squishy <laughs> okay and then you cut it if I'm remembering this right I don't have the pictures in front of me and then she like she just put it in here like put the one end in here and then is that right did I do that right and then did I do that right maybe it was flipped the other way maybe it was flipped the other way hold on let me try that this way maybe it was this way and then how far did she feed it in I don't even know because then I think she she popped this in and then cut off the excess so okay here let's try pressing down gently to get that in there Ugh. okay maybe okay then what happens if we cut this off Jacqueline if she's watching this and be like Katie you did this part wrong yeah I know okay and then just chop there's a little bit sticking off there <laughs> that's okay I mean it's just popping right back out was that right did I do that right I don't even know was I supposed to fill it up all the way? Okay, let's try this one more time. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> oh, okay, I mean, no, that's still wiggly. I'm, I messed something up. I messed something up about how I did that. Jacqueline, don't be mad. No, that's still definitely wiggly. What did I do wrong? Okay, we might go back to the washi tape method just for, just for this video. <laughs> Okay, I'll try this one more time and then I'm gonna I'm gonna call it because you guys don't wanna watch this. Ugh, okay. Oh you could just rip that off. Okay, that works too. Okay, but now it's a little bit sideways. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Well, actually maybe that's okay. Okay, maybe I just need to get the hang of it. <laughs> okay. We're gonna try it. <laughs> can always switch to the other pen if that ultimately ends up having been a bad idea. It's still, it's a little, it's like wiggling back and forth. Okay, so this pen is just gonna be for show today. Okay, let's just, let's do that. And I will troubleshoot it more later. So, <laughs> you guys are saints for putting up with all that. Let me peel back this plastic cover. I did start on this section already. Um, and I'm sure we'll get through this and get into another section because this kit has a bit more in the way of color blocking and um, there's a little fox friend. And so it just generally is moving a bit faster. Here, our dragon can still keep us company there. Okay, let me, I am trying to remember the last time that I used this pen. So we're gonna go ahead and put some new wax in there. I don't, it might've been last drills and chills, really. <laughs> uh, anyway, how are you guys doing? Oh, I haven't used this, this uh, Notre Mama's mud yet. Nice. Okay, let's go. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> I hope your your day is off to a wonderful start. Um, do we think this putty is usable or do we think this putty needs to be refreshed as well? Should we try it? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. That's some dirty, dirty, gross putty. You know what? We're just going to change it out. <laughs> you're getting you're getting the true whip experience here. Um, uh, here in this whip and chat. So anyway, I am in full-blown drills and chills mode. <laughs> I decided because I have a million and one really ha strongly Halloween themed kits in my stash that I really wanted to work on um, something with more fall vibes for kicking off drills and chills. Hence this kit. I think I talked about this last week. I probably did. Uh, but yeah, this almost got de-stashed. Like it was literally in one of my de-stash lists that I put up on Patreon. Um, and I'm a, I'm happy that I that I ended up held, holding on to it because it ended up being one of the few like really fall oriented kits. I also wanted to use it as a um, personal tester to see like, okay, how do I still feel about landscapes? And I'll say that I'm glad that I did not jump on um, any other landscapes as beautiful as the artwork is and as tempting as it might've been. I'm really glad that I didn't because I got about three sections into this and I was like, yeah, man, these colors, these are kind of boring. <laughs> so, um, and I was like, I'm glad that this kit isn't too big because it's just, it's a lot of, um, 
uh, yeah, a lot of those a little bit more, I don't know, colors that I don't quite have as much fun working with, I guess, but um, I like that it has some color blocking. Um, and I knew I wanted to work on it during our whip and chat tonight because, ooh, making a mess. Um, clumsy hands. <laughs> uh, because it, I knew that the symbols would be a little bit easier to see than my kit from Jade to Gem Shop, just with the lighting I'm using and stuff. So, um, yeah, but that kit is is coming along as well. And um, Jade is, well, the sale will be over by the time this goes up. She ran a sale this past weekend for Labor Day. I still have a little bit of time because I think it ends at midnight her time tonight. It's currently Saturday evening. And um, yeah, so I still, I still have time. I'll finish this up and I'll have like an hour to go shop and see if there's anything I need, I need to have. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I have been just in full tilt, drills and chills, all the things, all the time. Drills and chills kicked off two days ago. Yeah, because it's the third. Two days ago was the first. <laughs> and um, I'm really, really glad that I had uh, just a really quiet and open morning to myself there because I just found some diamonds that spilled from the last color. Uh, because that was just a very intense, intense morning in particular. And after, like the whole day really was. Uh, because it was a lot of, um, with the kickoff video going up and with it actually being the event starting, you know, we put up a thread for people to put in their start photos. I put up an uh, a kickoff video that I think let a lot of people know about it as well. Um, I know that a lot of like sponsors and just actually just general crafters like posting about their starts and stuff like that, I think uh, drew an even even like greater audience. And so um, I spent several hours just on the first uh, trying to stay on top of my emails and my comments, uh, Facebook messages, Instagram messages, all the things. And I, I really, really want to make sure that I let you know up front that if I missed a tag from you or um, a message from you or a comment from you, whether whatever platform it was on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, in one of the Facebook groups or for Facebook like uh, direct messages, if I missed something from you, I promise it was not on purpose. Um, the best way to get in touch with me that I know that I am not going to lose track, that it's not just going to disappear is email and I always have my email in my description box. It's just diamonds and washi, one word at gmail.com. Um, and even if it takes me a few days to get back to you, I don't have to worry about like tags and notifications seem to disappear from Instagram and Facebook um, after uh, either a certain amount of time or if you get a certain number of them, I, yeah message requests are not very reliable on either platform I find. So email is really the most foolproof way to get in touch with me. And even then I, if, if you haven't heard back from me within like a week, please feel free to send a follow-up message. Cause it's possible that I read your email or your message and was like, Ooh, I want to check on that and get back to this person. And then, then didn't. I'm trying truly trying to become a more organized and reliable person but it's a it is not my strength unfortunately um so thank you thank you thank you for everyone that's just been so incredibly kind and understanding about all the things i have to say honestly i am just loving getting to be a part of hosting drills and chills this year I like by far the overwhelming emotion that I feel is just gratitude um I just feel super super lucky that I get to host this event and that um I get to be a part of this community that gets so excited about um, this event I am super grateful that People have been so kind and understanding. I'm ridiculously grateful to have a modman team that is kicking butt and taking names, trying to make sure that um, we're trying to stay on top of all the things with the social media elements, um, like the, the Facebook groups and whatnot. So um, 
yeah, yeah. I just I feel excited. I feel excited and and grateful and all those all those happy feels. Uh, but I do also. I feel tired. <laughs> I'm really I'm a little bit tired, and so I had to take a day or two off from like uh, responding to all the things, <laughs> just because I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta catch up a little bit um, on rest. But uh, it's been it's been lots of fun. So. I love seeing all the projects that people are working on and um, I love how everyone's like posting progress and stuff in the Facebook group and on Instagram. So please, please, please keep it up. Even if I uh, haven't necessarily like liked your post or your, uh, yeah, your post on Facebook or Instagram, I st I'm seeing them. I'm loving it. And it's, it's giving me giving me life <laughs> it's 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 letting me like vicariously experience fall and fall weather because it is so flipping hot here we finally hit we always get a week or two of this and it always happens um i feel like in september and usually we get a week in september of it and like a half a week to a week of it in october of triple digits in fahrenheit i don't know what that is in celsius but it's so hot that literally it's it's one of those things where even Adam, my husband, who doesn't, generally speaking, mind the heat. He's like, literally, I walk outside and my mind is not capable of thinking anything else besides, holy crap, it's so hot. Oh my gosh, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Got to get inside. Yeah, got to get inside and all that. Um, excuse me. So, you know, it's so hot. I literally just want to stay inside and diamond paint and not not go out there like literally uh our kids have like a lot of school districts out here they'll have they just call them inclement weather days uh which is like in southern california because the weather is so incredibly mild out here where it's sunny 360 350 days a year or whatever um they just have something that they blanket call inclement weather days because with having such mild weather overall, we tend to have lots of just open campuses. Like kids walk outside to go from class to class or to go from like their their classroom to lunch. Like often the lunch area is literally outside. Like that's just the default. Uh, so on an if they go to an inclement weather day schedule, they modify it so that like, okay, recess is inside, lunch is eaten inside, and that encompasses whether it rains or whether it's just too flipping hot. And um, they had some inclement weather days this week, and uh, the school already let us know they're like they're probably gonna have some next week as well. So I was like, yeah, I mean, good. <laughs> and I want these kiddos out here getting heat stroke, <laughs> like actual heat stroke. Um, but yeah, so that's that's like that's a thing that happens. But that's how hot it is, you know. Um, again, I wish I should know what the conversion is to Celsius, but I feel like uh, someone was talking. I was in someone's live or something the other day that lives in. Maybe it was Ra I don't think it was Rachel. It was someone else um, was talking about like. Oh no, it was Bev because she lives in Canada, and she was talking about like, oh my gosh, it's going to be over like so many degrees Celsius. And she's like, let me see what the conversion was, and she converted it, and it was like 30 degrees Celsius was like 80 something degrees Fahrenheit. And she was like, I know you guys are probably making fun of us because it's like, oh, it's not that hot. But like when your your um, like your infrastructure isn't built for that kind of weather. And just when like I feel like your body acclimates to being used to a certain kind of weather and climate and temperature. Like, yeah, no, I get it. But I also wanted to be like, girlfriend, that's nothing. I like add 20 more degrees Fahrenheit and that's what we're living this week. Um no, I know, like, hot is hot. <laughs> I respect that, you know, Canadians are struggling. It's hot. <laughs> that feels really hot. But I don't know, 100 degrees, was it like 30, I don't know, 6, 38 degrees? I don't know. Someone tell me. I could Google it, but hold on. Actually, let me ask my watch. Hey, Siri, what's 100 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? That would be 37.8 degrees Celsius. There you go. 37.8 degrees Celsius. We're at at least that right now. And even overnight, it's not getting that cool. Anyway, um, why did I already start on complaining about um, the heat? <laughs> this is like a staple of my channel. I just complain about the heat all the time. Okay. Drills and chills. I was talking about drills and chills. So 
I, I was saying that I'm getting to enjoy like pretending like it's nice, cool, brisk fall weather vicariously through everyone working on their drills and chills. Yeah, this isn't me working on this one. <laughs> uh, so I, um, I'm working on, I really want to map out and plan out. I want to be at least a few weeks ahead on um, at least knowing what my topic is going to be for each weekly drills and chills video. Uh, so this upcoming, like this upcoming Thursday, which will be my week one video for Drills and Chills, spoiler alert, it's actually going to be on an, an unboxing of this kit, which I found to be actually really fun because uh, it's an older kit from Diamond Art Club. I got this kit two, about two years ago, I believe, during its initial release. And so it had like the old toolkit in it. Um, I feel like the canvas material is just a tiny bit different, that the backing on it is a little bit more... Uh, it's a little bit softer, like almost a little bit more velvety. The sticker sheet that came with it was not pre-cut. Like it's just, it's little things um, that I notice. And so that was actually kind of fun, but I thought actually an unboxing would be really fun to do because as I've been watching people post their projects in the Drills and Chills Facebook group and watching them um, post like their start photos or post on Instagram. I have seen, I think one, maybe two other people working on this kit. And I'm like, this kit is really beautiful. It's very beginner friendly. Like I'll do an unboxing of it because it's in stock right now on Diamond Art Club's website. You know, maybe this is one that people might feel like they want to go take a look at. You know, it's a little bit less expensive than some of these really massive landscape kits or massive Halloween kits. Um, it's from a Ukrainian artist, so you get to feel good about like supporting an artist that's in Ukraine. So I don't know. I So that's what I thought I would do for week one. And I have ideas for the other weeks, but I thought it would just be helpful to actually try mapping everything out. And then it'll take that load off my mind a little bit, I guess. If you have specific things you'd be interested in seeing for Drills and Chills content, Feel free to let me know. I always feel a little funny asking that of my viewers though, because I'm like, you guys, you guys show up because a lot of you probably show up because you just want to kick back and relax. So you don't have to think about like telling me what content create that I should create because that's kind of that's my quote job. Like that's what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, so, but I mean, no, seriously, if you're like, ooh, I'd love it if you uh, did a tag about like all things Halloween or I love if you unbox a Halloween kit from this company. Speaking of, I actually have ordered some, and I have a couple other shops on my list that I want to get to this weekend. Um, I have ordered some kits and accessories from new to me shops to try out and that'll be fun. I think I can incorporate some of those into drills and chills. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. I feel it tickle. Is it going to, nope. Okay. Um, I've been having a lot, a lot, a lot of allergy stuff going on lately, like lots of like sinus pressure and a lot of sneezing and stuff. It's not, it's not the you know what. I actually did take a test this morning out of an overabundance of caution and it was like negative, like fully negative. Um, but, um, yeah, I've just been like sneezing. It feels like a ton. And Adam was like, are you okay? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what's going on. It's probably just allergens with the change of seasons, even though we really haven't shifted from summer to fall. We've just shifted from hot summer to like really freaking hot summer. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I'm like, I guess I'll take some allergy meds and yeah, because I don't want to be sneezing up a storm like in a store and then people are like looking at me sideways like, what are you doing in public <laughs> if you're sick? I'm not sick. It's allergies. Uh, but oh, I thought I was going to sneeze again. Okay. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. Okay. So one of the big things that happened this week is that the kids went back to school. Hooray! I feel like our district is a little bit later than a lot of others, but yeah, the kids are finally back in school and it was so nice like that first morning that they had school I initially thought like okay I'm gonna get some filming done and really like to run some errands and take advantage you guys no forget that Tuesday morning I was like I am just gonna kick back and enjoy the glorious silence because Adam goes into the office for work um, usually Tuesdays and Thursdays occasionally another day in the week 
And so I was like, Adam went into the office. I literally just have the entire house gloriously to myself. I'm just going to sit and revel in it. Um, and I did, and it was glorious. <laughs> uh, but it definitely um, reminded me just of how big a difference I find that it makes to have, excuse me, have my mornings to film and to run errands and all of that. It just, it makes me feel like I can be a lot more productive and I feel like it really frees up a lot of the rest of my day and I like that I can use some of that time to just rest and, and have for me. Um, so and then I was productive. I did like the next day film <laughs> like three videos <laughs> um, and that felt really good because then it was like okay my evenings are free because I like the pacing of getting my filming done in the mornings and then Adam and I have the evenings to hang out um, and or I can then edit in the evenings instead of often, like in the summer when the kids don't have school, uh, having to film and edit in the same evening often, even if I bulk film. <laughs> so uh, it, it really does make a huge difference and I recognize the privilege of, of being able to take advantage of that. So I promise I'm not trying to rub anyone's nose in it at all, um, but that was really nice to have them back to school. It's a little bit of an adjustment though, because we did go from like just sleeping in to our heart's content to, okay, now we're waking up to an alarm again. And I'm telling you what, you guys, that was, those were early wake up calls. <laughs> that is going to be a huge adjustment. Um, I typically like the way that my circadian, circadian rhythm likes to operate is that I will go to bed at like, 1 30 in the morning usually about <laughs> sometimes a little bit later and then i'm able to i, I sleep in until like 9 or 9 30 at least um and because connor can get himself up we can get mike up and they'll kind of just do their their own thing like they can get to their snacks and they chill they come up if they need us and all that um they're in school let me tell you what <laughs> Having to wake up hours earlier than that is, that's rough because they both, uh, they ride the bus and their bus pickup times are pretty early relative to their uh, school start times. So I was like trying to both back up my schedule and also just be like, okay, if I need to, I can go back to bed after I get them on the bus. Um, but then I decided, let me just take like, let me swipe some of my kids' melatonin gummies to try to help my body get to sleep sooner um, the night before. And that did help. And that did help. So I am going to try to keep up with that. And you guys, I was really proud of myself even. Um, I Once I was up and moving, like just sort of the adrenaline of getting both kids ready and all of that, then I was like, well, I'm up and it's like not nearly as hot. Again, we're coming back to the temperature. It's not nearly as hot this time of day. Like this is when I want to go to the store and get my shopping done, like grocery shopping done and stuff and um, and all of that. And then I can just be home by the time it starts to get really hot out. And then I feel like I've been productive and get some filming done and yeah so I ended up staying up and not going back to bed any of their school days this week so I don't know how long that's gonna stick around like how much of that was just like the novelty and the adrenaline of it all um but yeah so I was I was kind of proud of myself and I then it all went out the window this weekend when I was like yeah you can stay up as late as I want again <laughs> Um, cause I could sleep in and it's a long weekend too, because here in the U S it's labor day weekend. So, um, Monday is off. I need to make sure that Adam has, I mean, of course he has to have Monday off work. Like that'd be really hilarious if he had to work on labor day. I'm sure he has Monday off. I wonder if he's forgotten that he has Monday off though. Um, we have plans to hang out with some friends tomorrow. Assuming everyone is healthy. They had the, the mom, um, my friend had texted this morning. She's like, hey, so my kiddo, like she has a runny nose. 
it's not the thing, but it's just like your typical kindergarten cold. And she was like, let me know what you want to do. I was like, well, let's see how she's doing tomorrow. <laughs> like, let's not see, see how she's doing day of. Because part of me, like, so here's my, here's my mentality and my approach is like, you send kids to get school. It's a cesspool of germs. They're going to get sick. Yes, I understand this. I embrace this to um, a large extent. However, if you have been around for a little while, especially like earlier this year, like you heard me talking what felt like virtually nonstop about how it felt like I just could not keep my family healthy for any length of time. Um, and we practice good hygiene. I know that those schools practice good hygiene. Um, and like we are not gross people like we we wash our hands very diligently but of course you don't want to wash your hands too much because then you build like super bugs and it's like this whole thing like but we have i think a very reasonable and healthy amount of hygiene and cleanliness and reasonable precautions in this family but you know what you guys my kids just catch a lot of things um and when you send them to school with a bunch of other kids uh, that, you know, I don't know what their hygiene habits are, but like, it's just, they share germs. Like that's just part of school. Like I think most parents will tell you that, um, especially in those early years. Uh, so I know that this is a fact of life, but my kids missed a, a not tiny amount of school last year due to illness. Like. And I was sick a decent amount as well. And so part of me, like, as soon as she said, like, oh, you know, my kiddo is sick. It's a runny nose. I think it's just a kindergarten cold. Part of me wants to be like, I know it's just a cold, but I'm so afraid that if we say, yeah, you guys still, let's come over. Let's let the kids play. Because we're going to let the kids play and then put them to bed at our house and then do like a game night and stuff. Um, I got to open up a new section. Uh, so it was going to be like that whole thing. Um, which was super fun, but I'm also like, look, if your kiddo comes over and plays with our kids, like, I just know that, okay, now our kids are going to get sick. Like, I just have to accept that reality. And I'm like, am I ready to accept the reality of my kids already looking at missing some school? Like, no, I really don't want to accept that reality yet. So I am just torn. So I'm going to see how her kiddo is doing in the morning. So... We'll see. Look at those. Just, okay, sure. You magnets stick together. Um, but yeah, that's just going to be my, my dilemma all the time. This year is just going to be like, okay, so what risks am I willing to take? Like what consequences am I willing to, to suffer? My kids are never going to be the kids to get the perfect attendance award at school. I'm okay with it. I was never that kid as a child. I think it's just immune systems. You know, there's only so much you can do. Um, yeah, so anyway, open up that new section. Look at all these pretty colors. So this is the bench in After the Rain. I don't know if you can, it's mostly covered up by washi tape, but you can see kind of the original artwork there. That bench is this bottom corner is what we're working on now. So pretty, so pretty. It's not, it's going faster now that I'm like chatting with you guys. And if I have like a good, a good show going on in the background, that helps too, but um, yeah, so I'm just deciding like, okay, what, what do I want to do tomorrow? I really, really, really freaking want to see my friends is what I want to happen. But again, am I, am I good with, am I good with uh, them probably getting sick and potentially missing school? Because it's now it's a whole thing that if your kids have these symptoms, then okay, well then that means that they get sent home and they either have to like see a doctor or have a negative test or this, that, or the other thing. And it's just, it's a whole, that's a whole thing. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, other fun things that are happening with the kids being back in school is, for example, I finally got a haircut scheduled. You guys, my hair is ridiculously long at this point. It is so long. Did I talk about this last week? Was that in my Patreon blog? Hi. Also, I have a Patreon. <laughs> if you want to see lots of behind the scenes, you actually get to see a lot of my face and my kids and stuff and just keep me company while I'm like out running errands and I um, 
I spilled, I spilled tea <laughs> uh, sometimes. But yeah, I have a Patreon and it's the beginning of the month, so it's a good time to join. I'm also probably launching YouTube membership soon, so stay tuned for that if you prefer YouTube memberships over Patreon. I really love Patreon. It's a nice little community and there's some fun perks. So I always have that linked in my description box below the videos. So you can take a look if you want, but don't, don't feel pressure. I still share a lot with you guys here too. Anyway, what I was saying was, I have needed a haircut for actual months. It's been over a year since I've had my haircut and I could seriously chop off like a foot of hair and still have hair past my shoulders. So um, I don't know how much I'm gonna have them take off. I actually really adore having long hair uh, and I have completely embraced like the crazy curls that I tend to have, but it's just, it's too much. <laughs> it's too much. And also like after Lindsay at Emeralds and Fairy Lights talked, this was a few months back, about how she was thinking that like the length of her hair was contributing to why she was having headaches. And so she watched a YouTube video and then promptly cut her own hair at like three o'clock in the morning. And I love it. <laughs> but now, but that made me think like, oh, what if my long hair, like the weight of it or whatever, or like the the tension or strain from when I pull it back when it's a million degrees outside, like what if that's contributing to my headaches? And so I'm like, hey, Lance, you wanna send me that YouTube video? Not really. I also really wanna get color in my hair because I got a good look at one of my, um, like a selfie that I took that was kind of up close of like Micah being super cute on me. But I when I looked at the picture, all I saw was that like all along my right temple, I'm like, ooh, that's a good amount of gray hair those I do not remember those gray hairs being there before and so then I had a little bit of a crisis um I, I'm in my like early 30s so I'm just like what the heck so I also I don't just want to get my hair cut I would like to get some color put in as well I usually just have my my hair person do um some really like neutral like a natural like highlights I think sometimes they call it caramelizing which is where they really just go like a shade above or a shade a little bit a shade brighter and a shade darker of like your natural hair color so it kind of just gives some overall like texture and it's also a really good way to hide grays so it also grows out really well so when you're a really like flaky person about getting your hair cut like I am it doesn't look like I have um a line <laughs> where the color stops and my natural color starts but I think I'm going to have to start being more reliable about getting my hair cut and colored if these if these grays are going to just continue to increase. And I 100% fully blame my children for my gray hair. Like, not even kidding. I did not start getting any gray hair until after I had children. So speaking of, I had another moment of, like, uh, existential crisis earlier because Connor, we were reading, um, we were reading the I Love You Forever book, which as an adult I'm like man there's some problems here with like some boundary setting that needs to happen with this mom that's like popping over to her child's house in the middle of the night and stuff but anyway I'm, I'm not focusing on that I'm focusing on like some of the sweet things about that book but um Connor was asking because in the book it's like following this this baby throughout this kid through <laughs> this person throughout their life throughout the various ages like baby like young child like teenager and then like adult and all that um and so Connor was asking me lots of questions like mommy when like what's a teenager like when will I be a teenager and I was like when you turn 13 and then I had a moment I was because I then asked him like oh, how many years is that and he told me and I'm like oh my gosh he is closer to being a teenager than he is to having been born. And then I just had a moment where I just had to sit. Like I just sit down and I was like, no, <laughs> like that is not allowed. Like, oh my gosh. Like in the span of time that it's been since he's been born, like once that amount of time passes again, he's going to be a teenager and then some, and my body is not ready to have teenage boys like at, at all. He's also at the age where he's asking really hilarious questions. Um, and they're not like really truly, I mean, they're hilarious to me because I'm like, wow, okay, I need to figure out how to answer these questions in a way that like I actually want to answer them and not like get awkward in the moment at all. Because look, I'm one of those, you can call me like a hippie or whatever, uh, where 
I don't want to like <laughs> have any conversation, have any topics feel like they're taboo for my kids. Like I want them to feel like they can literally ask me about anything and that I'm not just going to shut them down and be like, that's not something we talk about. Or like, that's not appropriate. Like I don't, I, I'm not here to like set my kids up to feel like guilt and shame surrounding like any topic in their lives. Like that's like, that's not the kind of house that I want to raise my children in. Um, let me give you a concrete example. So today, Connor, as he's talking about like, you know, oh, mommy, was I a baby once? And I was like, yeah, do you want to see some pictures of when you were a baby? And um, pulled up some pictures on my phone and showed him like some pictures, like we were still in the hospital and she just been born. And he's like, oh, wow, mommy, like, um, where was I before I was born? And I was like, okay, well, this is, again, we're getting real existential here and I don't know how to answer these questions. I just said, well, before you were born and you can see like you as a baby right here, like you were in mommy's belly. He's like, oh, and then did you open your mouth and I came out and I was like, no, that's, that, that's not what happened. He's like, well, where did, where, how did I get out? And I was like, do, do I open this can of worms? Like, it's not, it's not a can of worms. Like, it's a completely normal, age-appropriate question to ask. But I was just like, kid, like, I'm literally, like, I've literally, I've sung your goodnight song. Like, I'm about to walk out the door, and now we're starting on these questions. Like, I don't know if I'm ready to have a full-blown birds and the bees, even an age-appropriate one. I don't want to be like, well, you came out of, like, this place, and this is how that works. And some babies don't come out of there. Some of them have to come out of their mommy's tummies with the doctor's help. So I think I just, what did I say? I think I just said, well, you were in my tummy, and you and you came out. Um, and he's like, oh, like an egg? <laughs> it's just like... Well, no, you weren't inside an egg like when you came out like you were a baby. And so I think we navigated that okay. But I want to, you know, I'm not one to like use non like anatomically correct terms either. But I've, I'm feeling weird about saying them on the in this video, to be honest. Cause I don't know what YouTube is going to do if I start like talking about like the, <laughs> the correct anatomical terms for body parts. So like I wouldn't have been shy about saying like you came out of insert the word here um but I just thought I'm afraid that that's like like more that like this isn't the time that I really want to talk about it and so I was kind of waiting to see like okay how is he like how much is he going to push this because if he would have kept pushing and pushing I would have been like you know buddy it's bedtime like let's talk about this tomorrow like seriously we'll sit down and we'll talk about it more tomorrow like when it's not time to be going to bed but I'm just like Oh man, I gotta, I gotta get on it <laughs> with being ready how to answer these questions. Um, because yeah, he's definitely at the age where you can't, you, you can't sneak anything by him, which is great. Like he's super smart and very observant and very perceptive. Um, but that's going to keep me on my toes in a lot of ways. That's for sure. So, um, anyway, if you are a parent of young children, you have like good resources that you enjoy like con both my kids actually are very very avid readers so I wonder if there's like an age appropriate book for him that could be like a good like supplemental tool or something like that I'll have to poke around because that might be that might be helpful but yeah he's 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 happy ish to be back in school like he's definitely at that age at this point where he was like mommy I don't want summer break to end like I'm just like I just want to stay home and like play Roblox and I'm like I know you do, but there's lots of fun things that are happening at school too. So he, but he is, he's happy to be back and having fun and around like his friends a lot more and stuff. Micah, like the thing that upset him most about the first day of school was that I wanted to take a picture of him. <sighs> the kid has a complex about having his picture taken. Um, he doesn't mind like selfies, but if you're like, holding the camera like in front of him and like facing him he gets really freaked out I don't know why he gets especially freaked out if Adam like pulls out his DSLR or something like forget it he hates that so let's just say at the first day of school picture that I took of the kids because I tried to take a picture of them together because I thought oh if Micah has Connor like distracting him and with him maybe it won't be as scary no, he was all about it. He's, you could see like his face looks a little bit red in the picture. He's not even looking at the camera because I gave up like pretty quickly. I was like, don't even worry about it. So he was looking over to like watch for the bus to come and I got Connor to do a silly pose and I snapped a picture. And um, 
I had sent it to a couple of friends <laughs> and one of them was like, is he crying because he's sad about going back to school? And I was like, no, he's crying because I took a picture, like, cause I tried to take a picture of him. And then I showed them a picture that I had taken like two minutes later where the bus had pulled off and Micah is just sprinting for the bus. He's so excited to get to go on the bus and go to school. So Micah's living his best life. Um, he just does not appreciate the paparazzi whatsoever. So yeah, that, that happened. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the kids are, the kids are doing well. The school, the way the calendar works out because the first week of school is like before Labor Day, they end up having like two short weeks. Um, they don't have like a full five day week of school until their third week of school. They totally get to ease into it. So um that's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it'll, it'll be good. Uh, just an update on like my headaches and stuff. So I think I mentioned last week that I had finally talked to my doctor and picked up a new prescription, um, that was for like as needed as I got migraines. And I, in both a good news and bad news, I had the chance to test it out not once, but twice in the past week for migraines. The good news is, is that it does seem to be working. It doesn't get rid of them 100%, but it brings me relief from the really acute symptoms. Um, the one downside to it is that it makes me incredibly sleepy. And that's, I think, the most common side effect. Um, it's Maxalt is the name of it. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, and it just makes me tired. It makes me really tired. Um, but I'll take relief from migraines for some sleepiness. So I guess it'll be a little bit context dependent maybe. Um, but, and the other thing is the one, I'll have to ask the pharmacist if they've got another way they can like give the pill because what they gave me is the kind that dissolves on your tongue and maybe that makes it faster acting and they've given it like a peppermint flavor, but it tastes so gross. So I might ask the pharmacist next time, like, is there another like just a regular pill you can give me what are the pros and cons to that um i've been having a lot of headaches this week though just because mm, heat is one of my very very top triggers it's a combination of um just the feeling of being hot like the bright sunlight and then dehydration so i've been trying to drink tons and tons and tons of water but um i feel like i've had a headache a lot of days this week um, and then t twice you know yesterday and then a few days before it, it turned into a migraine um, and that's just yeah it's it's a real bummer because it feels like it, yeah it's just it's gotten to a point where these headaches and migraines have affected like my day-to-day -day life like I don't want to like I ended up not going out with friends tonight I was supposed to go out for a friend's birthday um, ended up not going out tonight because I was like, it is just like, even at night, it's so hot between the heat and like the noise and, um, the everything. I just know that I'm going to most likely get a migraine again. Um, and, uh, so I decided not to go and like, I don't want to go outside and, and play with my kids, you know, because it's just it's so hot that it gives me a major headache or a migraine. Um, and just in general, like, I just feel like I just want to be at home because it's a controlled environment and I know that I'm not going to get headaches. So that's something I really want to address. Um, I do want to go ahead and make an appointment with my doctor to talk about potentially doing a daily preventative, potentially referring out to a neurologist just to get that like base set of scans done and make sure there's not something else going on. But, you know, I feel like I'm taking steps <laughs> as I as I have the margin to, and um, I'm glad that I at least have an emergency med, like a rescue med, as needed med. There's like a million different terms for these things, but a med that I can take when I get a migraine that seems to be working. And I hope that that continues to be the case. Um, fingers crossed. Um, but the way insurance works out here, and I found this to be true with like the Imitrex when I had that, was that um, they'll only give you like nine pills for the month. And 
Maybe there's like a couple of different reasons for that, but I was like, okay, that means I should probably depend on how frequently I'm getting. If I get two migraines a week, for example, okay, well, I'm gonna need to make sure I stay on top of like refilling it and all that. But anyway, continuing to track the headaches so that I can let my doctor know what's going on and hopefully I'll be able to keep taking steps towards getting some more like long-term uh, relief. Other things that are going on, um, I guess, I guess I didn't really have a lot else that I was going to talk about. I'm like glancing over the little like note sheet that I made for myself. Um, this, oh, this is completely random. <laughs> it was like a little footnote that I had at the end. It's like, did anyone see that Taylor announced that she's got a new album coming next month? I frankly, I don't care how basic it makes me. I love Taylor Swift's music and you can pry it from my cold dead hands. Like <laughs> I love Taylor Swift's music and I was thrilled when I saw that she announced that she's got a new album coming. I really thought that she was gonna be doing another one, of, like um, she was gonna be re-recording one of her old albums uh, that she has the rights to now. Thought we were going to see like a Taylor's version of 1989 or something. And then when she announced that it was a new album, I was like, yeah, I'm good with that too. <laughs> so um, her albums, like when she does album releases, they always tend to be close to my birthday. And this one's a little bit before. Um, I think it's releasing in like mid to late October and my birthday is early November. Um, and I can never wait till like my actual birthday to get the album. I'm always like, hey, Adam, early birthday gift. I'm getting her album when it drops. <laughs> I was like, okay. I really almost feel like, I, I don't think I'm the only one. Um, I'm at the point in my life where I kind of just like want to buy my own birthday gifts for myself and just be like, look, I know what I, I know what I'd like. <laughs> and also I'm not very patient for it. Uh, but yeah, so I should, I should start putting a bug in my friend's ears about like, maybe I want to do a birthday brunch because... That's going to be like a lot less likely to be a headache inducing environment and we can get mimosas and brunch food. Brunch food is the best. You can get sweet and savory. It's like you're getting dessert with your main meal, but it's completely guilt free and it's completely okay because it's brunch and it's like, well, it's pancakes. Like that's, that's just your meal food. It's like actually pancakes are really like dessert, but <laughs> waffles crepes all the delicious things but you just get to call it like it's it's brunch food so you're getting dessert for a real meal <laughs> um but yeah so uh, i was excited to see T taylor's dropping a new album go ahead and make fun i'll be just be sitting here listening to my my taylor swift drinking my pumpkin spice latte starbucks did release their fall drinks this past week and I got my first pumpkin cream cold brew which is really close to my like my my personal favorite drink which is just a vanilla a, uh, vanilla sweet cream cold brew bomb such a good drink um and the pumpkin cream is still good it's good but not as good but I'm like it, it makes me feel like fall so I'm you know I'll take it I was like, what is that noise behind me? My cat came downstairs to eat. <laughs> um, I film at my kitchen table for all the things, including these. So anyway, what I have coming this week. So obviously you'll have a drills and chills video coming um, on Thursday. I have lots of ideas for things I'd like to do. You, uh, you guys were really excited when I had mentioned the possibility of doing a... Um, a video on converting a pin to a cover minder that came up when I did my simply gilded slash like diamond painting adjacent small shop haul and I asked in that video because I had unboxed some pins and I was like I've fig like I've learned how to convert pins to cover minders would you guys be interested in a video on that and there was like a resounding Yes, from tons of people in the comments. So I might try to get to that video this week. I'm going to try. I'll say that I will try. While the kids are in school, I can film in the morning. Um, there will be a sneak peek from Diamond Art Club on Friday. And then if I finish my kit from Jade, maybe there will be 
post review. I also have some kits that I need to unbox. Ooh, yeah, I know that'll definitely be coming this week. My craftably pre-order came in, y'all. <laughs> I feel so terrible for Craftably because they just had a horrendous experience with their manufacturer for their pre-order process. Literally, the kits that came in, they literally came in just a couple of days ago. These kits are kits that I ordered in, wait for it, December. December of last year. It was like a pregnancy. Is how long it took me to get these kids. But that, I mean, they tried to be communicative about it. A lot of it was out of their control. And they've literally said, we are never doing pre-orders again because this was such an utter disaster. Um, and they even, what's a huge bummer too, is that they, in the time that it took because of some of the ways that these things worked out, they actually lost the rights to continue licensing a lot of these kits. And so basically like all the kits that were sold in these pre-orders, like I'm gonna unbox them and have to be like, and you can't even buy these like from their website anymore. Um, like they still had the, they, basically they, their licensing rights, um, they, they ended and it was like, well basically you can just produce the kits that have been pre-ordered, the end. So that's a huge bummer. I'm really, really, really excited about this artwork, but I feel so bad that like I'm gonna unbox it and be like, and good luck finding these in a D stash, basically. So, but I am so excited to finally have them in hand, honestly. Um, so I'll unbox those and we'll just see, we'll see. I'll, I'll map out the week and see what that's gonna look like, but. Anyway, you guys, I am going to go ahead and end the whip and chat here. Um, I'm glad we got to put a little dent in this kit and you could see all these really pretty fall colors we get to work with. Um, I'm going to link to this kit and all of the small shops that I mentioned down on the description box. If you want to check any of them out, please feel free to. Um, if you made it all the way to the end, let's see. How about one of the leaf emojis? Now, there's a few different leaf emojis that are fall specific, but any leaf emoji will do. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Let me know how you're doing, how your week and weekend were. And um, I hope that your week is off to a lovely start so far. Happy Labor Day if you're in the US and celebrating, because I think I'm still going to have this video go up on Monday, like usual for my whip and chats. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys go. I hope that you are staying hydrated, staying safe. Hopefully you are getting a taste of actual fall weather. I hope you're enjoying it if so, and I'm only very jealous about it. So I'm gonna go try to figure out, I'm gonna go send Jacqueline some pictures and be like, wait, how was I supposed to do this? This whole like squishy in the pen thing? I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, you guys, if you made it all the way to the end and you're not already subscribed, you probably would enjoy it here. So feel free to subscribe. It's just below the video on the right and you can hit the bell to be notified when I share new videos. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, my friends. I hope you have an amazing start to your week and I'll chat with you in the next one. Bye. Bye.